Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to be doing an install video of the Caseta wireless dimmer switches as well as a fan switch. Now, what's going to make this install video special is instead of doing a one switch setup, we're going to be doing a three. Two are going to be for lights and one's going to be for a fan. So I'm going to go through the step by step process in terms of how to install it into the wall, how to set it up with the app mobile application and then uh, any other questions or any other things that uh, may have been found along the way. So let's get it started. All right, guys, so let's talk about these switches. First, you have the wireless switch, with it, which is for the dimmers and the remotes. Obviously, if you want, you can use the remotes. I don't use the remotes. They just kind of sit in an empty space in my closet. But the main thing that you want is going to be for the actual switches. Now, of course, these are dimmers, so you can control it to where, you, obviously, you can to choose basically how much, what type of light exposure that you want. Uh, and then this piece here. Now this switch is the Lutron, where is it? It's PD6ANSWH. So this is a very specific switch that allows you to use the Lutron system for fans. I was doing a lot of research prior to purchasing these items and trying to figure out which uh, switch would work for what. At one point, I even thought about just using one of these, one of these down here as, a, as an actual uh, switch for the fan. Did some research. I actually talked to Lutron and they recommended this one. So this is going to be the switch that you want to use specifically for fans. You can get this on Amazon. I think on Amazon it was like 70 bucks for this switch. And I want to say these switches run like $59.99 a piece. Um, now you also do need that hub. So uh, either you can go buy the hub separate, which is I want to say $70, or you can buy a hub that comes with uh, the switch, the remote, and an actual hub that you need to plug into your router in order to control these wirelessly through like Alexa or Siri or something like that. If you're just going to use it, you can you just use it for the remote. But the whole point of this system is to connect it to either HomeKit, the Google Now, or Alexa. So. Um, you know, at this point, uh, these are this is from my research is what I found to be the best set of lights that you can get. So you have this switch, which is for the fan. You have these, which are for the lights. And for each switch, you do need one. So depending on your setup, if you have a two switch setup, you may need two of these. In my case, I have three, but two are for lights and then one is for the fan. All right. So let's go ahead and open these bad boys up and uh, get that rolling. So right out the box, you have this, this, this face plate here, wires at the back. You have these, these are gonna be vital. These are gonna be what you use to connect your wires with. And then you also, can I get this nice switch set up? Okay, now for the Lutron fan model, like I said, this is the PD6ANS. With this model, you open it up. Now, since I did buy this on Amazon, the box does a little, look a little different, but you have that. You're going to have a whole lot more wires on this because this is for fan control. That's what it looks like. You have your on and your off button. There you go. This one does come with a yellow wire, these, and then everything else that you need. And then this, of course, is your wall plate. take that off all right so now that we got everything set up everything's out the box ready to go the first thing that you want to do is on the wireless switches this plate here you're going to want to remove this plate you can do it with your fingers they just pop out there you go and then what you're going to want to do is remove these two screws and they can be removed by a Phillips screwdriver so you'll just take that, unscrew that there. Get that off. There you go. So you want all of your switches to look like that. And these, these extra ones, if you're doing a one setup, you can keep them. Actually, if you're doing one setup, you probably don't want to remove this. Um, because you're going to put it against the wall. If you're doing a two, two switch setup, you're going to want to take this off or three switch setup. You want to get this removed. So that's how you're going to want everything to be ready to go, primed up and set up. So one last piece that I want to mention to you when connecting these together. So in this case, it's going to look like this. 
when connecting these together, there are these little prongs here. You want to get some kind of pliers and then just kind of bend them off. Um, the reason why you want to do that is that way they go flush. So in this case, I'm going to take these off. I'm going to take these off. I'm going to take these off and then I'm going to take those off since they're going to be in that type of water. So we'll start here. Like I said, just get you any kind of pliers. You grip there right there where that line is and then you just kind of bend it back and forth. A couple bends, they come right off. There you go. You want to take all three of them off on that one. This one, I'm going to actually remove both of them because it's going to go in the middle. There you go. And we'll take on the last one. There you go. All right, so now we are prepped up, ready to continue our install. All right, people, so the first part of this install, as you can see, we got a three switch setup. The first part is to actually go ahead and take this face plate off. So in, in this setup, or well, actually, I'm sorry, before you do anything, the first thing you wanna do is go cut the power. So find whatever switch system you're gonna be working on. Make sure you go to the circuit breaker, turn off the power, and then maybe if it's gonna be in a room, maybe you wanna test it just to make sure that the power is off. But, uh, but yeah, after you do that, second step is to come here, Analyze what type of setup you have. In this case, I'm gonna need a flathead, a flathead screwdriver to take off each switch. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, guys. Now, once you've taken that faceplate off, you're left. You can see one, two, three. You see all your switches. And then now you're gonna need an additional Phillips screwdriver in order to take off each one of these. All right, so with that being said, we have the faceplate off. Everything's ready to go. I have already cut the power to these switches. So. As you can see, nothing's happening from there. So the first step that I'm gonna do is actually remove the, screw, remove the screws. Now there's one here and one at the top. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver in order to do this. All right, once that's removed, you're gonna have your ground wire right here. And then you're gonna have your two positive wires right there. What you wanna do is use a screwdriver, remove all three connections. Now with these screws, they don't actually come all the way out, so you just wanna loosen them up enough to where you can remove the wire. And you probably will need either some pliers or a flathead screwdriver to bend that wire out of place. And then over here, you got your ground. Okay, so now that we've removed or we've loosened those screws on the ground wire, it's kind of bendable. Just pop that one out. And if we're going to go for these wires, you don't necessarily need anything. You could just bend it. It is copper wire, so it is bendable. It's a little harder than, you know, any other type of wire, but you can do that. There you go. You got that removed. So now we're ready to install our first switch. Okay. So on the back of that switch, you got three wires. You got the green wire and you got two positives. So the green wire is gonna be your ground wire that's gonna to connect to this copper wire here. And these two black wires are gonna to connect to those two black wires. Now, obviously, like I said earlier, these wires are copper, so they are bent kind of into play. What you wanna do is possibly take maybe some pliers, bend them out to keep them straight, so then you can go ahead and wrap these around those. All right, so now that we have those wires bent and open, what we're gonna do is connect, like I said, the green wire is gonna to go to the bare copper wire here. So you just grab it and then kind of wrap it around it. Okay, and then we're gonna connect our black wires here as well. Now when you're connecting these wires, you kinda wanna do it towards the middle, maybe even to the top. That way when you're putting your connectors on, they stay there. Sometimes you gotta do some, use some pliers if you wanna have it as a really, really close grip because these wires are pretty thick. So what I always do is start in the middle and then I just kinda work my way to the top. Like I said, with these pliers, I always kind of go around it one more time just to make sure that it's that solid contact and then kind of drag it to the top. Same thing with this one. There we go. So now that we have all, all three of our wires connected, as you can see, one, two, and then three, now, this is the time where we pull this out, these caps. We're gonna utilize these caps. So, 
All right, there, there are two screws in there. You don't need that just yet. Right now, you just need the caps. So what you're going to do is you'll put the caps on top of it here, and then you'll just start twisting down. They do have thread inside, so they are threaded. So they will catch, and you'll start filling it as soon as you start twisting. Sometimes it doesn't catch initially, so just kind of keep turning it, and eventually it will catch. All right, that's tight. Last one. All right, so now we have our three wires connected. We're done in terms of the wiring for that switch. Time to move on to the next one. So this switch that I have here is actually for the fan. So this is my fan switch. So we're gonna use a separate one from there. Still has two. Still have your black copper wire or your regular copper wire here. So same process, remove or not, don't remove, but loosen the screws here. There you go. Once you've loosened them, you just want to, like I said, bend them a little bit and you'll be able to remove them. There you go. Now that you've pried that one open, comes right off. We're ready for our light switch, our fan switch, I should say. All right, so now with the fan switch, that's what it looks like. But on the back, we don't have just those two wires that we used it before, right? So on the fan switch, we have our green wire, right? That's still for the ground. We have one black wire, we have a blue wire, and now we have a red wire and a white wire. So, the green wire, for, since we're using it for a fan switch, the green wire is gonna go to the ground, the black wire is still gonna go to one of the positives, the blue wire, we're actually gonna cap off, so we're not gonna use the blue wire at all, the red wire is going to go to the other positive, and then the white wire is actually going to go to a neutral. So hopefully your light switch has a neutral, should be a white one in there. This house is a relatively new house. It was built in 2016. So uh, I think they have the white one capped off in there. So we're going to have to pull that out and uh, find where, that, where, where it's at and then plug this one into it. So once again, green is, is going to go to your ground, which is that copper wire. The black is going to go to one of your black wires. The red is going to go to the other black wire. And then the white wire is going to go to a white wire that's in the switch. So once again, we're going to have to bend out these wires to make sure that when we're wrapping that wire around there, it fits perfectly. All right. So now that we have all three of our wires here bent out, let's go ahead and connect those to the switch. Our green wire is going to go to the bare copper wire. Our black wire, and actually I don't have enough wire here, so I'm gonna go grab some um, wire cutters. That way I can extend this out and make it a lot longer. All right, so I suggest you, if you're gonna use a switch, you're gonna need one of these to kind of cut it to make that wire long in order to wrap around. There we go. So now we got that wire a little bit longer. There we go. So the wire's are a lot longer now. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna take this red wire Kind of twist it up with your fingers. Make sure you get a nice, good twisted wire. Same thing with the black wire. We're just going to twist it up now that we've made it longer. And then now we're going to be ready to uh, connect it to here. So black wire is going to go to another black wire. Just kind of wrap it around. Make sure you get a good, solid, tight connection. Red wire, it's gonna to go to the other black wire. Once again, just wrap it around. Make sure you get a nice, solid, tight connection. And now that we have those there, then we're gonna go ahead and grab our yellow caps. Okay, same steps that we did on the last switch. Kind of pull it down to the top, make sure you get a good connection there. And then you're just gonna twist on. Wait for it to catch. There we go. So we got our blacks to the red and black, the ground wire to the green one. Like I said, the blue wire, we're gonna cap off. Now the white wire needs to be connected to the other white wire that's in here. So this setup, here's my white wire. It already has a cap on there. I'm just gonna remove this cap. And then what I'm gonna do is take this. Actually, I'm probably gonna cut it, make it a little bit longer because this is a three wire setup. Okay, now that we have that connected, just take that cap, put it back on and turn it back on there. All right, so the last thing that we have to do now 
it just kind of capped this one off so what you can do is it does come with an extra one for that so I suggest just grabbing one of these and then kind of just wrapping it up and then just screwing it on obviously you have to cover it because you don't want any you don't want to have any wires that are open and exposed that that can touch anything because think keep in mind you have positives you have grounds you have a whole bunch of wires in here you don't want to run the risk of having anything in there so for example like in this case I don't know if you guys can see it there but right here there that's where the wire end stops and then you have a little bit of open wire in between it what I'm going to do is when I'm done with all of the, the, the switches, I'm going to go back and take some electric tape and wrap it around. That way there are no corners that are touching because like I said, these ground wires are out and about. And once you start pushing everything in there, then you never know what you can run into. Wires could possibly touch. Your positive and negative does not go well. So make sure you, what you look at all of these and find out if there's any possibility for a positive wire to be open enough to touch a negative wire. All right, so now, we're gonna to go to our last switch, which is the last light. Same process here, we gotta remove the top and the bottom. So now, we're gonna use that same setup. We're gonna remove that wire. On this side, I have a pink and a black. We're still gonna treat it the same way when we're setting up the other light. So we're gonna remove these wires. We're loosening this up. Okay, now we're gonna follow our steps. We're gonna bend these out again, then we're gonna grab our switch. Go ahead and get these wires ready to go. So pink wire, we're gonna treat it the same way we do with our positive wires. We're gonna connect that there. Black wire, it's gonna go to our other black wire here. And then our green wire, Old Faithful, is gonna go to our bare copper wire, our ground wire. Now that we've connected all of our wires here, we're gonna go ahead and get those caps and cap them up. All right, so now all of our wires, all the, all the, the wiring part of all of this is done. We got our light switch here. We got our fan switch here, and we have our other light switch here. So now, really all we're gonna do is bend all those wires, put them back in, uh, and then we're gonna kinda clean everything up. What I have found is you really wanna, do, obviously you have to, you wanna do one at a time. If you wanna start from left to right, or in this case, I'm gonna try out from middle and then go side to side. These wires are, like I said, copper, and they're not the easiest to bend, so you wanna maneuver that in there to make sure that they don't get bent. Or I'm sorry, not to make sure that they don't get bent, but you wanna maneuver those in there to make sure that everything fits. So as I previously mentioned, we do have some of these wires, for example, like right here. See where there's that copper that's kinda of sticking out? Once you bend these wires and you put them in, you never know if one of these ground wires may be close in an area where this could touch. So the best thing to do, actually the really best thing to do is cut them and make sure they only have enough to fit on there. In this case, I don't have wires that are, uh, pliers that are, are strong enough to cut this copper wire, so what I'm gonna do is just tape them up. Okay, nice and neat, no wires that, if, if bent could ever touch a ground wire, which could mess something up. So just do an inspection across all of your wires just to be on the safe side. Okay, obviously the ground wire, you don't have to worry about that because that's a negative. So kind of let that be. Okay, so now that we got all the wires wrapped up in electrical tape on those tips, like I said, the most effective approach is actually cut the wire and cut it how long you need it. But in this case, I don't have the proper pliers, so we're gonna go through that. Um, now that uh, we have that set up, we're just basically gonna go ahead and button it up, get them all uh, plugged in. All right, guys, so Part of going through this process, we kind of learn something as we go. Um, I, a second ago, I had everything set up. We're going through and testing it out. The fan switch wasn't working. Um, if that happens to you, the best thing for you to do is really the problem is you need to switch because these two are black wires. You don't know which one is which. So what you need to do is go back, test it, see if it works. If it doesn't, go back, cut the power and switch the red wire with the black wire. And um, what typically would probably be best for you to do is to do that early on before you kind of button everything up. In this case, we found out after the fact, all you have to do is switch them. As a result, that fixes the problem and then you'll be good to go. All right guys, so now that we have installed all switches, they're buttoned up there, the last thing to do is to go ahead and put that face plate on. Now, there are some screws on here that need to go into those top screws and this face plate just pops off but you just want to be careful when you're popping it off that way you don't break anything 
Okay, now that you have these separated, this is kind of safe for last. You can kind of go ahead and put that on last. And uh, you're going to go here. Now, these screws, once again, they, they screw into these top three here. So just kind of put it on there and get the screw in. All right, and the last step to this is just go ahead and snap this in play. And voila, you are good to go. So now what we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and turn on the circuit breaker switch and we're going to go ahead and test these lights out. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and test this out now that we have all the switches wired correctly. Let's go ahead and get started. First one. Boom, we can see the lights cut on there. As you can see, the green lights kind of lit up there. Turn that one off. And as you turn them off, they kind of go down. Now you can see the green light for the fan. There we go, the fan is on. You can tell by the green light. And then the last set of lights. There we go. Turn it back off. Awesome, so our next step is to go ahead and pair, if you guys are gonna use these, these remotes, okay? So the easiest way to do, to pair the remote is to first thing that you have to do is hold down the off switch for I think it's about six to eight seconds. There you go. It'll turn it the opposite of the, if the lights were on, it'll turn them off, vice versa. You'll see this blink in here. And then what you'll do is this bottom, the, the off switch, you'll hold that down for the same amount of time. There it goes. And as it starts blinking, you can let go of the button. There you go. So now if I press the off switch on the, on the remote, here we go. Here we go. It's off. All right. So now we're going to pair the next switch for the next set of lights. We're going to hold down this one. All right. Then we're going to hold this one down until this starts blinking. There we go, let go. It's gonna run its course. All right, and then if I go ahead and turn it off, there we go, it's turned off. Now we have both of our remotes paired to each switch. So as you can see, the light bulbs are flickering. Once again, chances are it's probably just the light bulbs. So swap it out with a regular incandescent bulb and see if that fixes the problem. And if so, then just go to your local store where you can purchase uh, a supported bulb for this set. All right, guys, so here is the actual hub that connects all of the lights, and this connects it to either, you know, Siri with HomeKit, Alexa, or the Google Home. So this is basically, all that it is, is a small cube. You have an ethernet port and you have a power port, and that just go ahead and connects into your modem. And that's it. So next steps are to set it up on the app. Okay, so now that we have everything installed, we have the hub installed, we have our switches installed, our next step is to download the app if you haven't already, the Lutron Smart App. Now in this case, I've already set up my apps because I have some other switches running in the household. Uh, if you haven't already, then what you need to do is go ahead and, and uh, create a profile and everything else. And once you get to that, once you get done with that, you'll get to this steps here. So now that we're here, in order to add a light switch, the first thing we want to do is go to settings, add device, it's getting ready to add device. We're going to click on in wall dimmer, and then we're going to hold down the off switch for about eight to 10 seconds, similar to like we did when we were pairing the remote. So let's do the first one. All right. So it recognized it. So device name, I'm going to call the first one. Ceiling lights. Actually, we're going to call it living room ceiling lights. Okay. And then you can obviously select what image you want to save it as. Next. So it goes through a process where it's setting it up, linking, with, linking it with the hub. All right. Now it's asking you, what room would you like to have the ceiling lights 
uh, this, I'm sorry, these uh, living room ceiling lights installed in. Since I already have a home set up through the home app on, and obviously I'm using an iPad, I have these here preset. So in this case, I want it to go into the living room. Click on the next button and that's it. So now we're gonna add two more devices. So I wanna add another device. Getting ready to add device. Here we go, we're gonna do an in-wall switch for the fan. Same process. We're gonna hold down the button. Awesome, it found it. So now we're gonna call it, let's see what I wanna call it. Living room fan. Done. In this case, I'm gonna select the fan switch. Click on next. That's it. And then the last device, we're gonna add the last wall dimmer. Hold it down. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the home app and then I am going to go under rooms. All right, so default room. The, this is the room that all the lights just got added to. So if I wanna basically restructure this and put the living room lights under living room, what I'm gonna do is hold down this since I'm on an iPad. If you're doing it on a phone, you can 3D touch it. Click on details and it's gonna ask you what location. You just wanna change it from default room to living room done get out of there same thing for each setup details default room living room and actually that says light i'm going to change that to fan there we go and change that one here details living room lights we're going to change that to living room save that some reason the fan didn't get changed. Okay, so it's still, still under default room. Okay. And the bridge, I'm actually gonna put that in the office. So that's where it's at. There we go. So now, if I swipe over, in the living room, I have there so I have the two sets of lights which are the two switches and then the fan so for example if I want to do the ceiling lights there it goes they're on turn them off now let's say I wanted to add this to Alexa what I would do is go here click on the Alexa app all right I'd click on this options I'd click on smart home okay Then I'm gonna click on discover devices. So now it's gonna look for the new devices that we just add, added, which are the, light, the two lights and the fan switch. All right, so she found it. Okay, so now you see living room lights, living room fan, living room ceiling lights. So they have been added to Alexa. Alexa, turn off the living room ceiling lights. Okay. Alexa. Turn on the living room lights. Okay. Alexa, turn off the living room lights. Okay. Alexa, turn on the living room fan. Okay. Alexa, turn off the living room fan. Okay. Turn on the living room lights. Okay, they are on. Turn off the living room lights. Okay, the living room lights is off. Turn off the living room ceiling lights. Okay, the living room ceiling lights is off. Turn off the living room fan. 
the living room fan is off.